Today, let's talk about someone who was burned clean. And I want to read you from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, where we read this. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. The angel flew to Isaiah with a live coal, which means that the coal was still hot and burning. It was so hot that even an angel had to use the tongs from the altar to grasp it. The mention of the altar itself catches our attention. This must be heaven's version of the altar of incense that was set before the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle of God, according to Exodus chapter 30. We know that the earthly tabernacle God instructed Moses to build was made after the pattern of a heavenly reality. At least that's what Exodus chapter 25 verse 9 tells us. But in Isaiah's heavenly vision, he mentioned two pieces of what we might call furniture. The first is the throne, and the second is the altar. The throne, of course, is for God. That's where he rules and reigns. The altar is for us. That is, that's where we find cleansing and purging from sin. And we should never confuse the two. And we should understand what each one is for. The angel had a surprising purpose for that burning coal taken from the altar. Isaiah says, he touched my mouth with it. Isaiah knew he did not serve the Lord like these seraphim, whose name means the burning ones. So God said, I'll light a fire in you also, Isaiah. And that's one reason why a burning coal was used to purify the prophet. You see, Isaiah had just cried out in the previous verse, Woe is me, for I am undone. We might think that a burning coal to the lips would be more painful than a vision of the holy God. Nevertheless, for Isaiah, it was more disturbing to see the holiness of God and to compare it to his lack of holiness than it was to have a lump of burning coal applied to his own lips. This was an essential step of brokenness for Isaiah in preparation for ministry. Abraham experienced some 13 years of burning in his life. You could say that Moses had 40 years. It seems that Isaiah only had a few moments, but those were enough. You see, God's work is different in every person. And the end result was good for Isaiah. This is what the Lord said over him. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Isaiah's sin had to be burned away. The fire of judgment was applied to his place of sin that was his lips. And this was obviously a spiritual transaction. The same principle works on our behalf with regard to Jesus' work on Calvary. Our sin was placed upon him and he was burned with the fire of God's judgment. Yet, because Jesus was holy and righteous, the fire of God's judgment did not harm him. It only burned away the sin, our sin. And once Isaiah had met with the Lord, once he had been convicted of his sin, and once he had been cleansed from its guilt, then he was ready to serve God. In Jesus, God can make us ready the same way. So I don't know what kind of burning work the Lord might be allowing in your life today, but to whatever extent that's true of you, receive it and let it do its work of causing a greater holiness in your life to be established, and then you can serve and honor God all the greater in its way. Let that work in your life today.